right before your eyes. You're listening to Aviation Marketing Hangar Flying, the community for the best sales and marketing professionals in the aviation industry. You can't learn to fly just from a book. You learn from other pilots who know the tools, the skills, and the territory. Your hosts, John and Paula Williams, are your sales and marketing test pilots. They take the risks for you and share strategies, relevant examples, hacks, and how-tos. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes so you won't miss a thing. Welcome to Aviation Marketing Hangar Flying, Episode 15, When Not to Bother with Marketing. Now, we've been working with several books uh, about sales, marketing, business topics, and so on. Some of our favorites are The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss and the 80-20 Sales and Marketing book by Perry Marshall. Uh, now, one of the key points in both of those books is that most of us are doing too much work, not that we need to work harder to get better results, it's that we need to figure out what we should be concentrating on and what we should be focusing our efforts on, right? Which means working smarter. <laughs> working smarter rather than harder, exactly. So, you know, what can we eliminate? What can we automate? What can we delegate? Uh, and what do we just have to do ourselves? And ideally, those will be the things that get the maximum bang for the buck, right? Absolutely. Okay. So with that said... ABCI has decided that we are no longer going to be providing marketing consulting services to flight schools. How about that? <laughs> um, as of February 1st of 2016, uh, that will be true. And all of the flight schools that we've been working with, we have talked with them already. They already know um, how this is going to work, and they are thrilled. Actually, they are quite <laughs> surprised. Which is great. So... Um, it's good news all the way around, uh, less work for us to do, and we're going to get better results for them. And we'll tell you all about how that works and what's going to happen with that. But first, I'm Paula Williams. And I'm John Williams. And we are ABCI, and ABCI's mission is... To help all you folks out there sell more products and services in the aviation world. Absolutely. So we belong to a whole bunch of associations and groups and um, use our use information that we get from a lot of different places, including, you know, a lot of marketing automation, software groups, user groups, project management. John's got an MBA from the David Eccles School of Business and at the University of Utah and lots of other places. We use a lot of Sandler training methods. Uh, we use a lot of GKIC marketing techniques, if you're familiar with Dan Kennedy and, and uh, Bill Glazer. Uh, those are the kinds of things that you're going to hear from us uh, put together and applied to the world of aviation, right? Of course. Okay, so first, we'll talk about a couple of housekeeping things. Um, if you're new to the podcast, we had just finished up a series of four uh, podcast episodes about advertising and prospecting. And uh, we're going to start next week a set of four episodes about phase two, which is building credibility and closing sales. And then following that, we're going to do another set of four episodes about um, repeat sales, recaptures, referrals, um, testimonials, and other kinds of things. So there's a great way to remember this that somebody just told me the other day, and I told her I was going to steal it because this is great. Um, phase one is reach. Phase two is revenue. Phase three is repeat. And the vast majority of marketing companies, I would say, spend about 90% of their time and effort and your money on phase one, which is reach. And what's wrong with that, John? Well, that's all nice, and but uh, if you got all these imminent prospects uh, calling you and communicating with you, you have to build credibility to show that you really know what you're doing. And best of all, you need to close sales. Absolutely. And then you need to get repeat business, which is really where the money is made in the aviation industry. So, um, you know, a lot of companies think that they need more leads when they're really just not making great use of the leads that are coming in. Most of the time, uh, these sales take a lot longer than they do in retail or any other part of the world. And other advertising and marketing companies don't realize that. So they'll just tell you, advertise more, advertise more, advertise more, and you can run out of money before you run out of runway, right? 
Exactly. <laughs> so that's why we do things the way we do. We call it long cycle marketing. And once again, phase one, reach, phase two, revenue, phase three, repeat. Um, so that's what's going on. If you uh, do need to do more advertising and, and uh, outreach, if you need to focus on on prospecting, then you might want to listen to episode 11, which was advertising and prospecting, episode 12, which is calls to action, episode 13, uh, six digital prospecting methods, and episode 14, four traditional prospecting methods. So those are all out there for you. Um, enjoy, help yourself, and uh, focus on the pieces that are the most helpful for you. Okay, so next week we're going to start our four-part series on phase two, building credibility and closing. Next week, starting with episode 16, and then after that we'll do our four-part series on phase three. So join the Marketing Masterclass. I cannot advise this strongly enough, and it's not um, just that we love to have you in the program. It is that if I were in the aviation industry trying to sell something, it would be so much easier with the help and assistance of the people in this group. Uh, We have got the coolest group of people that I have seen in a very long time this year. We have got uh, a lot of activity going on with people helping each other. So in addition to the materials and uh, the information that you get from the Marketing Masterclass, you also get this network of people who is really going out of their way to help each other. And I just wanted to mention a few of the things that happened just in the last week with some of the people in the group. And now these are people who are aviation writers. We've got software companies. We have got flight schools. We have got um, you know everything from soup to nuts in the aviation industry. But I'm just going to tell you first names. You guys know, know who you are um, if you're one of these people. But um, things that happened just in the last week. Bert interviewed Shane for one of our member highlight um articles. Uh, Jeff skewered a bad advertisement that happened to be one of mine, uh, which actually was a wonderful thing. Uh, it's Sometimes it's great to know what is not working and why. Um, Jeff helped Bert find people for with a very particular set of skills, if we want to quote the movie, quote Liam Neeson, right? Gene mm-hmm. um, helped Jerry work on a sales strategy for a very specific type of prospect, Uh, You know, sometimes that's exactly what's missing is you can't step into the shoes of your prospect unless you happen to do that every day. And you don't know the exact words to use. You don't know the exact techniques that are going to resonate. But if there is somebody in the group that is in that that category, they can really provide some invaluable help. Um, Norm and Shane started brainstorming ideas on how to work together. Uh, Shane helped us find a, a headphone jack. Uh, Catherine shared some really fantastic tips for calls to action from uh, some design materials that she ran across. And Brian shared a six-month campaign that he's been using uh, with really great results. So if you don't want to do everything from scratch and you really are interested in doing less work with better results, the best way to do it is to see what other people are doing and see ways to adapt it instead of reinventing the wheel, for heaven's sake, right? And all those people save too or from different companies helping each other. Exactly. So very important. And, you know, I just can't stress enough that this is the biggest bargain and the biggest secret in the aviation industry. If you sell anything uh, or market anything, uh, you really owe it to yourself to check out the the class. You can join at any time. You can drop out at any time. So there's no obligation. Uh, There's really no reason not to check it out. Okay. So three things have happened. Uh, to get back to our uh, story about why we are not doing marketing for flight schools. The first, we're going to talk about why we started marketing for flight schools in the first place. Uh, We're going to talk about an idea that we had with some uh, cohorts or colleagues um, about a thing called, we called the Aviation Better Business Bureau. And we're going to talk about a third conversation that we had with a completely different group of people um, where we made some, some connections with airlines and, and manufacturers. The Aviation Better Business Bureau is nothing more than an idea right now. It mm-hmm. needs to happen, but its time isn't yet. Exactly. Okay, so it all started with November 6208 Charlie, which is my favorite airplane on the planet. And your airplane. It should be your favorite. <laughs> exactly. It is a Cessna Skyhawk with the glass panel, the Garmin, the whole uh, toy box and everything else. We flew it home from the factory um, and and so on. And I was not 
a pilot at the time. Um, and actually, this is the airplane that I learned to fly in uh, and got my license, uh, took the check ride in and everything else. So uh, I have lots of warm, fuzzy feelings for, for Charlie. So Charlie and I <laughs> spent a lot of time at a flight school. Uh, strangely enough, we, we did a lease back arrangement with a flight school. So, uh, we were working with the, the flight school owners and ended up doing a lot of, of conversations and things with them. And we got to know their situation and their problems, uh, pretty well. Um, since we were on a lease back situation, of course, we had an interest in making sure that Charlie was flying as much as possible and that the flight school was getting as many students as they could get. Uh, to keep their roster full and their schedule full and, and making sure things went well. And in the process, we learned a lot about how flight schools do marketing. And at the time, I was doing marketing for a financial institution um, and started thinking about how we could help this flight school by using some more modern techniques uh, for marketing their service. Now, at the time, they were doing a thing that we call a radio remote uh, to advertise their services, which really is a very expensive and inefficient way of marketing if you have a limited capacity. Um, if you know how a, a radio remote works, you can skip forward five minutes. If not, <laughs> this, is, this is the basics. A radio station, you make a, a deal with a radio station, you pay them a lot of money. They show up on a Saturday morning with their trucks and their inflatable animals and all of their uh, sound equipment and everything else, and they set up and broadcast their show from uh, the flight school. And so then they're doing interviews with people and they're talking with folks and, and doing all of these things um, and telling people, come on down, have a hamburger, take a discovery flight, uh, you know, it, we're having a great time here, and, and so on. And that attracts people from the neighborhood um, and from the city who have an interest in, in flight training, and some of them just have an interest in the radio station, and some of them just have an interest in free food. <laughs> but one way or another, they get a lot of people in the door, and some of them become students. Uh, some of them take, uh, a lot of them do discovery flights at cost or near cost and, and things like that. So it's a, it's quite a project um, on the part of the flight school. And in the process, they end up signing up, let's say, 20 students. Um, for a successful that much <laughs> for a successful uh, um, that might be a goal for a successful radio remote um, which would provide a, a return on investment for that marketing activity the problem with that is even if they did meet their goal and sign up 20 students they only have four airplanes and six instructors so you know with those kind of numbers they're going to end up with some people unhappy and some people with this unable to meet their schedule and things like that so they're going to have a high attrition rate uh, now more than 50 percent of the people that start flight training don't finish um, that's the result that's just the statistics from several years ago and i don't know if it's improving but uh, that was a number that uh, that i'd read from from fasana materials but anyway traditional marketing techniques produce feast or famine results and you're dealing with a limited capacity and you're dealing with thin margins. So you really don't have a lot of money to waste on, on marketing. Um, and also the students want understandable but impossible guarantees. Well, those that are proceeding in a career direction. Exactly. Now, if you wanted to become a doctor and you went to a medical school, I don't think you would insist that um, as a result of of proceeding through medical school that you would get a job as a doctor. It just doesn't work that way. That's not a guarantee that they can provide. But a lot of students and parents are looking at career options and saying, hmm, this seems like an awful lot of money without a guarantee. So, you know, that's the sales challenge uh, in a flight school. So we did a lot of different things like um, started doing inbound marketing, social media, other kinds of things to get a more normalized um, flow of leads coming into the flight school. Uh, and also qualifying those people so that you'd end up getting people who are more likely to stay and finish the program, so kind of reducing that amount of churn. We also worked on retention programs and other kinds of things. So it was a lot of work, but there's a lot working against us in a flight school. Would you agree? Yes, their attitude mainly. <laughs> it's just not a great environment for uh, these kinds of, of cutting-edge marketing techniques. So um, that's thing number one. 
Uh, thing number two was a conversation that we had with uh, um, an associate of ours who owns property on several airports and also owns several flight schools. And he was running into situations, in fact, on one of the properties that he owned, there was a flight school that closed its doors and disappeared, leaving a whole bunch of students in the lurch. And uh, this was absolutely shocking to him. Uh, he ended up having to really brainstorm some solutions to to make this work because it was something that happened on his property, even though it was not anything that he ha was able to uh, had any influence over. And this was not the first or the last uh, flight school that just closed its doors after taking the money of a bunch of, of students, foreign or domestic, and disappearing off the face of the earth. There was one in Salt Lake City um, around the same time, and there were a bunch in different places around the, the United States. So what happened um, was that the flight school, you know, takes people's money on the pretense that you're going to begin your program, you're going to uh, finish your program, you're going to get a uh, at least an opportunity at a license and proceed with your career. I don't think it's a pretense. I think it's a presumption. I think everybody plans that to happen. Exactly. So we can assume that everybody had the best of intentions and it still ended up with the same result. But the problem is, you know, students and parents want their money to be safe. Um, flight schools want to be trusted. Um, but the flight schools don't necessarily have the economies of scale to, or, you know, they don't have somebody who's experienced or, uh, knows a lot about the finance situation and is able to set up an escrow account, which is not a trivial thing to do, right? Escrow or trust accounts for businesses are difficult from several perspectives. One, most banks themselves don't even know how to do it. There may be one or two people, and you have to ferret out that person who can actually sit down with you and provide a list of things to do to actually initiate the trust account in the business name. And then you've got to get with an attorney to put together appropriate documents for the student to sign and so forth so that the trust account works as identified and the money can't be taken unless it's used to pay for the student's education, and if they fail, drop out, then the rest is returned to them. All that is a, a lot of process and procedure, and most banks, financial institutions, and others don't know how that works for non-real estate-related entities. Exactly. So, you know, <clears throat> this is a daunting task for flight schools who are already busy, over <laughs> overworked, underpaid, and understaffed, right? Um, and then the last part is there really isn't an agency that regulates the business practices of these flight schools. There are, you know, of course, the FAA regulates the training that is the training programs that are delivered and the quality of training. And, of course, students get their check rides and things like that before they get their um, their ratings and things. But there is nobody that is making them escrow cash or any other um kind of thing and there's nobody saying whether they're credit worthy or whether these people have filed bankruptcy 47 times or anything else so these things are all problems that are out there in the world uh, that people have to deal with third thing uh, again you know first was november 6208 charlie the second thing was the conversation about the abb which is actually a, a dinner we had that lasted about four or five hours <laughs> while we were talking about uh, these problems and how to resolve them. And uh, I don't know if you've ever gotten into those fantastic conversations where you solve all the world's problems, but then have to go home on Monday and face the reality of, of how are we going to make this happen. So nothing really came of that conversation except some really good ideas. The third thing was uh, we were approached by a group of people who had an interest in setting up an entity. You were approached. <laughs> by a group of people that had an interest in setting up a an entity to solve some specific set of problems. They actually wanted you to start <clears throat> and run this company. Exactly, because of our, our position, our situation, and uh, the skills that we had and the relationships that we had. So this idea was based on the fact that there are a lot of pilots who are retiring, um, a lot of Internationally, there are a lot of 
airlines that are going out of business because they're not able to fill their rosters. There are a lot of specific requirements for training among different airlines throughout the world, and they are not able to find among flight schools in the U.S. enough seats to uh, get done what they need to get done. And, you know, they're also not able to deal with the bureaucratic problems that we had talked about earlier. So airlines need what they call ab initio programs, where they basically take their candidates. In a lot of cases, these national airlines and other folks are required to hire their own citizens, preferentially or even exclusively. And they don't have enough trained pilots, so they find ideal candidates and then they want to put them through flight school from first lesson to first officer um, all the way through the program. Now, this is a daunting thing to do if you are a very small airline in a very small country somewhere in the world and you're looking at the prospect of working with four or five different flight schools to get the number of pilots that you need. Not only that, but you need to know enough to get a 141 school and then even after they graduate that, then you need a 142 school to put them through to get their type rating. Exactly. And any other specialized training that they need to meet the regulations in your country. And most of these schools are full and trying to figure out schedules so that they don't sit for three months before they get their type rating and putting that all thing together to go from soup to nuts in one package is just something that they can't do. Right. So it takes multiple <clears throat> flight schools to train a crew of pilots. And then there's also the housing, the bureaucracy, the paperwork, the money, you know, all of those things that need to be managed. So the idea behind the airline pilot gateway is to build a network of airlines, flight schools, and students and pilots uh, who need different things from each other and to provide a set of shared services, including logistics, financial services, legal services, sales and marketing, and quality assurance to make that whole process a lot less painful for everyone involved in the process, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So it's not just a marketing problem. But it certainly does take the marketing off the table. Uh, if this pipeline uh, can provide all of the students that you need, all you need to do is create the program that uh, trains these pilots in the most efficient and uh, safe possible way. Um, you know, we had talked before about the, the three elements of successful campaigns, the list, the offer, and the presentation. If you can take two of those three items off the table, you don't have to worry about the list because uh, the network will take care of that list for you. And you don't have to worry about the presentation because the network will take care of the presentation for you. All you have to do is worry about your offer. You know, what programs can you offer? How many students can you manage well? And how can you improve the quality of your program so that you're producing the highest quality um, pilots and you have the best offer? That you can uh, that you can produce um, that really takes eighty percent of the work out of the way and leaves you with eighty or with uh, with the, the best results, right? Absolutely. Okay, so that is why we are not providing marketing services for career-minded, at least flight schools. And if, if you're a recreational flight school, um, that's a different scenario. You've got a different market. So, you know, we'd be happy to talk with you. And also, if you're a flight school and you have um, personnel that you'd like to have in our programs, that is just fine. But we're not going to do consulting services for you because there's no need. Um, if you can bypass an entire set of tasks, then it would not be ethical for us to, uh, to take your money to do something that there's a better way to do, right? And we won't. <laughs> exactly. Right. So... That is, is the basics of the Airline Pilot Gateway. If you're interested in that, you can go to airlinepilotgateway.com. And uh, if you're an airline, you can click that button, uh, fill out a little form. If you are a flight school and you're interested in being part of the program, um, you can click that button um, and let us know a little bit about your program. And we'd be happy to, uh, to let you know more about ours and see if it's a good fit. And if you're a student uh, or student pilot or a pilot that needs um, a type rating or anything else, you can go ahead and fill out that form, and uh, we'd be happy to, to see if we can plug you in and, and find ways to uh, make the network work for you. Uh, 
Um, and speaking of making networks work for you, um, let's go back to the aviation marketing masterclass. If you are um, listening to this in January, we have a um, what we call our buddy pass going on. Basically, two members of your organization can join the marketing masterclass for the price of one. And as long as you remain a member, then both of you get copies of everything. Both of you get logins. Both of you get invited to all of our events um, and everything else. And we're asking that those two be at the same address for obvious reasons. But then you can study together and there's lots of of advantages to that. Uh, So that's a great deal and we really hope that you'll take advantage of it. You can download our tip sheet. We don't have a new one this week since we just did the announcement of the uh, Airline Pilot Gateway. We don't have any new marketing material. But we do have our um, calls to action um, tip sheet from last week still available if you go to aviationbusinessconsultants.com forward slash CTAs, uh, C-T-A-S. You can download that um uh, that tip sheet, which is actually a really good one. It tells you how to track the effectiveness of your ads and, uh, you know, 17 different things that you can do to get people to respond to you. So, um, please do that. And please also subscribe to our podcast. Again, it's brand new. This is our 15th episode. So subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher. Uh, and we would love it if you would leave us a review or leave us a rating and let us know what you'd like to hear more of, less of, and, and so on. And we'll see you next time. Hey, you could be larger than life.